Hi everybody, my name is Rita. I graduated in pharmaceutical chemistry and technologies uh, almost 10 years ago now. And a few months after I finished my master, I was enrolled in a PhD course of drug discovery and development. I moved from the south of Italy, where I am originally from, to the north. And I was always like very curious, uh, eager to know more people, more culture. And uh, I asked the PhD committee to spend some time abroad. And I moved to the Netherlands for one year and a half, where I finished my doctoral studies. I got the doctor title in December 2016. And in January 2017, I was already working as a postdoctoral fellowship in Berlin at the Technical University. That summer, together with my PhD thesis, I wrote two postdoctoral fellowship grants, one specific for Ireland and another specific for London. A few months after I moved to Berlin, I received the news that I got the Irish grant. And for whom works in science, you know that working on a self-funding project is much better for your CV or career. So I packed everything and from Germany, I moved to Ireland where I worked at Trinity College in Dublin for two years and a half. In 2019, I got the uh, Marie Curie Fellowship at Imperial College London, and I moved September that year in London. I am a very strong person. I never give up. I always try to reach my goal and my objective. I, am, I try to be always very helpful. I am ambitious, I am resilient, I am hardworking, friendly and open-minded. My name is Rita and I suffer of health anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic attacks and depression since the age of 12. Going to the university during my studies was always very tough uh, because I needed to drive in a bus from my hometown to the university. And I had always panic attacks, every morning. I cannot really be for a long time closed in a small crowded room. And the lessons at the university were always so long. Every time I was uh, doing an exam at the university, I was always not able to enjoy the achievement. Not because I was not happy about my performance, because the first thought I had was, what you're doing is totally useless. You are going to die soon. So, why are you doing that? I understand that for people that never experience anxiety, it's complicated to understand what I'm saying. But I also know that there are some people out there fully understanding what I am trying to say. The anxiety word is bizarre. Because you normally fear standard, normal situations. While you are contained in stressful situations. I remember during my PhD graduation, I was at a big screen on the stage, ready to present my work. And the only thought that I had in my mind was like, let's hope I will not faint. Nothing was related to the potential questions that I would get from it. I remember I was there and I was waiting for the committee to ask me questions. And, you know, during the dead time, I was always thinking, they're actually not telling me to not scare me, but I, I am dying. I normally wear pastel clothes, colorful because I can easily cough and check if there is blood on my saliva. I check the color of my face four or five times a day at the mirror. I was scared of driving, cycling, flying, losing control, becoming crazy, fainting, dying. I fear lifts stairs, long corridors, cars, crowded places, crowded roads, knives, needles, insects. 
And when you suffer of anxiety, you can actually experience real fear. For something that is not really happening, but that is just a product of your mind. And I can assure you that this fear is real fear. It's the same fear you would experience if you would have a tiger in front of you. You start shivering, you start sweating, you lose control, you, you think that the end is close. And I experienced this fear for so many years. This big fear that slowly, 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 slowly became depression. And everything, everything went dark. So the common thing between these two stories is my name, Rita. I always dreamt of being a scientist, of being this strong person with no fears, ready to do everything alone, ready to reach every objectives, every goal, everything, being scientist, being science, working for helping people. And working in science is challenging. I am very passionate for science. But you need to be very strong. You need to work hard every day. You never have to stop your brain. You have continuously been thinking of new ideas, new projects, uh, establish new network, uh, talking to people, traveling, going to conferences, performing well, achieving always more, always more. And this was my dream. I wanted to be this person. But on the other side, there was the real me who was scared of darkness. And you can imagine that also getting a plane and going for an interview to another country, for me, it meant going over the panic attack, I will go in the plane. So it was continuously this fight between these two people in myself. The one who wanted to be a scientist and the other was scared of basically everything. So now you must think, why did you not decide to tell people that you had these troubles? During my experiences, I was, of course, looking around. And you know, academic world is weird because it's populated by very smart people. But I can assure you, they can be very limited when it comes to mental health issues. When you try to explain people about your health anxiety problems or depression problems, the first thing that they tell you is like, science is not your thing. Science is not your work. It's already a stressful word. You will not be good while working in this. So how could I possibly tell people I have this problem? They would laugh at me. So I always have to hide this side of me. And I always have to be two different people. During the day one, in the evening at home, and during the night another. And I can swear, at one point, having two personalities, two different approaches of life, being completely in a parallel, living a parallel life, it was extremely overwhelmed. At one point, I could not distinguish anymore what was the reality, and what was the movie? What was the show? I could not remove any more the mask I put on myself. And it was crazy. It was too much. So the reality is that I think that mental issues are not totally understood at the moment. Mental issues 
are a dysfunctional problem, a physiological problem. They have to be treated like all the other physiological troubles. Trying to explain this to people is very hard. And I tried always to, of course, seek help from psychologists. I read tons of books. I did several therapies. And when I was thinking of how to cope with this problem myself, I always ended up with the idea, I cannot let this out. I cannot start taking medications, for example. They will make me slow. They will make me less efficient. Believe me, at one point, it was too much. So, going back to my real story, I ended up my PhD trying to cope myself with all these difficulties. And I swear it was very, very, very complicated. So, 11 days after I moved to Berlin, I was totally out of control. I could not distinguish anymore who I was. And everything was so heavy and so big. And it looked like I could not make it anymore. So it was at that point that I said, okay, I need to give up. I need to give up my dream of being a scientist. I have mental issues and because of them, I cannot do this kind of life. I have to listen to the other people. I have to listen to people who were, say, who were saying the scientific world is too much for who already has these troubles. So I decided to give up my dream. I decided to quit the job. I was ready to pack everything, to go back home, find another job, find a less stressful job and surrender to my problems, to my troubles. There was no solution. It was game over for me. I decided to quit my job in Berlin, packed all my stuff with a very heavy heart. I was ready to go back to Italy, leave. But it was exactly in this moment that I had my realization. There was a small part of me that didn't want to surrender. So it was in exactly this moment that I discovered this bubble. This bubble that we all have inside our body. It's here, it is in our stomach. It's, it's a bubble of energy that everyone has inside. And it was this bubble, thanks to this bubble, that I didn't surrender. But I decided to do it in a different way this time. I have to change something. I quit my job in Berlin and instead of going back to Italy, I decided to accept the job in Ireland. But this time things have to be different. I needed to show the world the real me. So I moved to Dublin and the first day at my job, went to the office of my boss and I told him, I am a hard worker. I am passionate for science. I will give my best for this work, but I am also clinically depressed. There will be some days where I cannot show up in the lab because everything will be too heavy, because I will be caught by fears. You know, when you are depressed, everything is heavy. Breathing is heavy. Breathing is difficult. Chewing is difficult. Everything is dark around you. And I honestly told my boss, I have these troubles. There will be some days where I have to go to the hospital for therapies. And I cannot attend. I cannot be this great scientist. And this moment changed my life. I decided to start therapies. I started to take medication 
I'll never forget. 29th of July in 2017. It was a rainy evening in Dublin. I took my first medication, antidepressant, and um, the, my life changed then. I started to tell people, my colleagues, that I couldn't drink alcohol because I was taking antidepressant, because I had problems. I was ready to handle the judgment of people, of scientists, of everyone. And it was in that moment that I also discovered that there are people out there ready to listen to you, ready to help you, ready to give you a hand. It was not difficult. It was not easy, I have to be honest. And it's still not easy. I am smiley friendly here, but it is not easy yet. But my life changed. My life changed. And my message for today is don't keep the burden for yourself. Just let it out. Not a lot of people will be there ready to listen to you. You will get a lot of judgment and it will be complicated. But there are people ready to help you. Ready to listen to you. You can find them. I made it. My life today is totally different. And if I made it, you can also make it. I am not stronger than anybody else. Need to be patient. Need to be resilient. You need to take your bubble. You need to squeeze it. You need to squeeze it out, all its energy. Towards your goal, towards your objective. I am always, I am very passionate about Vikings life. They were fighting an entire life in battle and they were waiting to reach the Valhalla. Fight your battle. Fight it. Take your bubble, squeeze it until you can reach your goal. Don't dream of your Valhalla. Make it real on earth. Now you have the strength to do it.